Hey folks, welcome to this little Blender tutorial. In this one, we're going to be looking at flipping indices. That might not be something that you've ever really considered doing before, but it's actually very useful. And it's, I don't want to say fun. It, it is fun. It's a little bit of mental agility, a little bit of maths. So the reason that you may want to do this is if, for example, you have a bunch of lines. One example would be something like power lines where you actually don't necessarily want them to go in one orientation. In this case, you can see we have things going this way you may actually want them to all travel in this other direction and to do that you would need to flip your indices and i've just got to switch these two around as well there we go so now you can see that we have lines going in the other direction in all likelihood if you're here watching this then you already have a use case so let's just go straight to it just so that we have something to work on here let's go back a few steps what I have is a simple grid. So this is going to give us all of our points. If you wanted to copy this setup, then just you know pause and, and copy this. So if you wanted to do a grid, grids are really useful because you have a very uniform uh, indexing. If you had a grid which you had then subdivided, your indexing is going to be all messed up. In this case, with a grid, you're going to have a very uniform grid of indices. So that's very important for what we're doing because obviously when you flip it, it's still, it, in, we need it to make sense. I'm going to actually come just into here and we're gonna make a little grid so that we can think about what we need to do. I'm gonna, just for convenience here, let's set up some annotations. So we've got a grid. I'm just gonna do this as like a three by four grid just so that we have something to think about. And I'm just gonna list them, uh, list out our numbers. So zero, one, two, three, ten, 10, and finally 11. Now I've left a lot of space so that we can make some additional notes for things like our target values and the way that we can change this. So the targets, so blue is our indices, which I'll just write IND. Uh, the red one is going to be our target. So now we have to think that we flipped this to the other direction. So now we're going to want 0, 1, 2, 3, 10, and 11. So, so far so good. This is what we're aiming for. And the blue is what we're starting with. Let's add another new color in here. What we want to do first is we want to basically have an index per row and an index per column. This is a little bit easier than you might think actually. So let's first of all start off with our index per column. So our vertical columns. There's a bit of maths that we do for this. We do a modulo of our U dimension. So let me just go back to my blue layer here. Our U dimension is this, right? So in this case, u equals four. And our v dimension is this, which is gonna be three. Uh, on our green layer here, uh, we are gonna be doing our column indices. So green is our columns. And the maths that we're gonna be using for this is basically the index. And we're gonna be doing a modulo of it, which we can write as if, if it was Python, it would be a percent sign. So index modulo by our u dimension, which is gonna be four. So I'm just gonna write u in here. So if we think about what modulo does, modulo returns the remainder of a division. So if we are dividing by four, zero divided by four is equal to zero and it has no remainder. How many times does four go into one? Zero, but it has a remainder of one now. Okay, so my green row goes like this, zero, one, two. How many times does four go into two? Zero, but with a remainder of two into three, goes in again, zero, but with a remainder of three. Now on our next row, four goes into four once, and it goes in perfectly, which means there's zero remainder. Into five, goes in once with one remainder. You can see what's going on here. We're basically counting up in rows. So some of you may have used modulo before. That is what it's doing. It's literally just counting up the remainders of the division. So that's great, now we have, now we have this. And if we think about this, if we think forwards a little way, this first row, zero, one, two, as we're coming, sorry, as we're coming down vertically, our targets, zero, one, two is going to start at zero. And the second row is going to start at three, three, four, five. And the third row, six, seven, eight, is going to start at two times our V dimension, right? So in this case, we can take our column index now and we can multiply it by our V dimension. And this is going to give us our row offset that as we need it, I'm going to overwrite these green ones because we don't need that. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to multiply these by V. So I'm going to do this. So in this case, we're going to go 
zero, and then in the next row it's going to be three, and then the next row it's going to be six and nine, and this is going to be the same in every single row, so zero, three, six, nine. We still need to work out our offsets, because this one is going to be wanting to end up as a one, which is one higher than zero, and this one wants to end up as a four, which is one higher than three, one higher than six, one higher than nine, the next row, two higher, the next row is going to be three higher, and so on. So now what we want is we want a uh, an index for each one of our rows in our original grid. So let me make again a new color. So this one is going to be our row index. And we can calculate this by actually dividing by u and then flooring. So if we take our index divided by u and then we can floor. So what flooring does is it basically takes any decimal and just ignores it. It just returns the integer value of, of a number, of a float value. If we just take 2 and divide this by 4, then we're going to get 0 0.5. But then our floor operation is going to remove that 0 0.5, so it's just going to return a 0. And if we were to look at the next row, we're going to have 6.5. Sorry, <laughs> 6 divided by 4 is 1.5, so that's going to once you've done your floor and you've got rid of that 0.5, then it's just a 1. And in the next row, 10 divided by 4, 2.5, and therefore 2 once we've done our floor. And this is basically going to work all the way across the row here. Now we can have a look at our numbers. So our target is 3 in this case. And if we were to add these two together, you get 3. Let's take another one. Let's take our 11. Uh, if we're aiming for an 11 and 9 plus 2 is going to get us there. 10, 9 plus 1, 5, 3 plus 2. So now all we have to do is we take these two together and just add them. So that is how you flip indices. It's so simple, right? <laughs> once you know how, and also once you understand modulo, division, and flooring. Hopefully that's not scared anybody off. <laughs> we can actually build this with nodes now. It's quite simple. Let's just have a quick look at how we're going to write this into our shape. So I've got a grid of points and just so that we can kind of debug what's going on and actually use our flip, we're going to apply it to a line. Uh, at the beginning I was using two lines, I'm just going to use one this time for ease. So my grid has a u and a v direction, dimension, sorry, and so 7 times 10, that's the number of points, that's what our count needs to be. Let's just use a math node, just so this is nicely automated. Stick a multiply on here, stick that on there. Right, so now we have the exact same number of points, perfect. And we can simply transfer, using a transfer attribute, the vector, which is going to be the position, so input position. And we're transferring by index, which is why we're doing all of this index work. And then we can just use this to set the positions of our mesh line. There we go. So right now you can see it's going in this direction, it's zigzagging, but you can tell it's going this way. And once we flipped it, it should go that way. So let's go back up and have a look at what we're doing. To get our column index, we can take our index and we're going to be modulating it. So let's add a math node, set to modulo. And I'm just going to stick an integer on here. We'll turn it into a group, but start where we start. Now we need to multiply this by V. So that's the other part of our column index. It's not actually the index if it's multiplied by v, it's just kind of the column offset, if that makes sense. It's like how much you're stepping per column. So we have our index being modulated by u and then multiplied by v. Now the next part of this is our row and this is going to be the index divided by u and then floored. So I'm just going to take my modulo, control shift d to bring it down with the inputs and I'm going to set this to divide. So now we have index divided by 3 and we can now floor this. And now we have our two values. We just need to add these together. So with a math node on here, and that's kind of it, actually. <laughs> it's a lot simpler than people think. Let's go into my group. I'm gonna add a group output manually just so I can set it to integer, just to make sure we have the right kind of output. I'm gonna call this one index because it is ultimately an index. It's just been flipped, it's been processed. I'm gonna call that index, that is fine. And now I want to plug in my u and my v. So this one's going to come through here. Again, make sure we're plugging this in as an integer. I'm going to call this one u. Plug this one down here as well. Set a default of 3 just so that we've got something. And then I'll plug in 
my V just the same. Change it over to an integer, call it a V. All right, um, that's kind of it. This is your node. Call this one something like flip index. Now we can just use it. We're going to be plugging this into our transfer attribute as the index. Plug it in like that. You can see everything's got a little bit screwed up, but this is just because of our index values. So now in theory, might be this way or it might be the other way. Now oh, there we go, perfect. So in one way it goes in this, and in the other way it goes in like that. So that is what flipping indexes does in a sort of practical sense. This is what the nodes look like, and this is the maths. If you're ever wondering like, oh, how do all of these nodey people make their node setups? Often we write stuff down, we make notes. <laughs> I use post-it notes just all the time. So I've literally got pens and post-it notes everywhere just so I can like check through an idea or indeed just writing down with annotations like this. It's always worth just making sure as you work through your modeling ideas like this, if you have something mathematical to come up with, don't be afraid of writing down notes because nobody expects you to hold all of this information in your head, especially when you're starting to do more complex things like this. I know we have the spreadsheet to analyze stuff, but frankly, often it's better to just write stuff down. All right, hopefully this helps and I'll see you in the next one.